Hey folks, welcome back to our Dice Tower Preview. I'm Mark. And I'm Randy. Today we're taking a look at Kicking Class. Kicking Class takes place over four years of high school with three trimesters in each year. You'll try to get scholarship points by passing classes, taking the ACT, increasing your popularity, and doing generally scholastic things. Indeed, yep. Kicking Class is brought to you by Ram Games. It plays one to four players, ages 10 and up, and each game takes approximately 45 minutes to play. Well, I'm sure many of you have wanted to go back to high school. So let's go experience it once again. All right, let's take a look at setup. You're gonna take the main board and put it in the middle of the table for everyone to see and have access to. You're gonna grab all the different tokens and sort them and place them within reach for all players. And you're gonna do the same with all the dice. You're gonna sort the dice out into their colors and place them within reach for all players. Then you're gonna take the action deck and the failure deck. You're gonna shuffle those up separately and put them next to the board. And you're gonna take all the different years of high school. There's separate decks for each year. You have your freshman year, you have your sophomore year, you have your junior and senior years. You first you're gonna take the freshman year, you're gonna shuffle it up and you're gonna put it on the class deck on the board. And then finally, you're gonna take your bus token and you're gonna place it on the first trimester of freshman year. Next, each player will select a character. They'll take the corresponding player mat, standee, and token. They'll place their standee at the beginning of the popularity track and the token at the beginning of the scholastic track. Each player will also be given two parent cards randomly. Now these parent cards have in the upper left hand corner, they have dice images. And so each player will get to choose one of the dice to pick on each of those cards. If you've ended up with a parent like Luf, Louis Tooth, the dentist, That's right. <laughs> you only get one selection. You, you have to take a yellow dice. But if you have uh, as a mother, Coral Reef, you get to select one of the three, three. dice that she has as, as an option. And uh, there's all the parents have very unique names. Yes, they do. <laughs> yes, they do. So you'll take those dice, and those are your starting dice. Throughout the game, you'll be able to get more, but for the freshman year, you are only allowed uh, to use two. two dice. One thing to also remember is that each character has two special abilities, so you'll want to keep those in mind as you play the game. And then finally, every player receives three action cards, and these action cards have various abilities. Uh, we'll show you a couple in a minute. All right, let's jump into a round. So the way this game works is that at its heart, it is a dice chucker. And you're gonna be taking classes and chucking dice to see if you can fulfill each of those classes or pass. Um, but what you're gonna do at the start of each turn is that you're gonna prepare the course schedule. You're gonna draw a number of class cards based on the number of players plus one. The first three cards are turned face up. The rest are face down. Now, the exception here is if anyone has a suspension card, That's true. They, then you draw one less card for each, suspension, each uh, student that has been suspended. Now, after the course schedule has been set up for the trimester, each player will have a chance to take a class, beginning with the most popular person and proceeding to the next popular person and so on down the popularity track. The way you attempt to pass a class is you first select a class from one of the ones available for that trimester. Now you can choose a face up class, but if none of those appeal to you, you can also choose one of the ones face down if you're choosing to be, you know, a little bit risky there. Yep. If you choose one of the face down ones, you turn it face up and then you proceed to roll your available dice to attempt to uh, meet the condition depicted in this large box in the center. Now each, each class card will have a, a color associated with it, a class type shown here on the small square on the right, and some rewards here at the bottom, and maybe even a special ability that you'll get to keep if you pass the class. Yeah, right. So you'll roll your available dice, and that will be two during the freshman year, and one additional dice each successive year, up to a maximum of five dice uh, on your, uh, senior, your, your senior, senior year. year. Yeah. yeah. So uh, you'll roll the available dice, see if it meets this condition depicted here. And for the homeroom class, you're trying to get a uh, sum from six to nine. Now, if you if you uh, do that, you know, say you roll a total of seven, you'll get to take this card, collect, uh, in this case, the reward is an additional red dice. Now, uh, sorry, you will get to uh, put that additional dice here in your reserve to be used in later years. There might be other things like pencil tokens you can mm -hmm. use with your ACT. We'll tell you about that in a second. Uh, scholastic tokens and also increases in your popularity. Right. Uh, also Apple tokens. Apple, which would help, very important yes, tokens. Yes, very, to, which you'll need to take the ACT. Uh, then you'll put this card, if, if there are no special abilities, you'll put this face down in your class's past areas. If there's a special ability, you'll tuck it below your player board so you have uh, access to that, that special ability uh, from then on. 
by doing so, by taking this card, you will leave a gap here. And if uh, there are fewer than three cards face up, you'll turn one of the remaining face down cards mm -hmm. up. Uh, so other players have uh, you know as many things to choose from as they can without taking the additional risk. Right. Now, if you fail the class, if you don't meet this condition uh, <laughs> depicted here, and it's important to note that it's not just against those dice that you're rolling, right? You do have action cards that can help augment those dice. This is rolls. true. It's important. So yes. it's not just roll and done. Yes, and this is a very key thing. I'm glad you mentioned that because you have. As part of the, the implicit ability of the class mm -hmm. you're taking, you have the ability to re-roll any dice that match the color of this square um, one time. You can re-roll each of the dice right. one time. You can also, as you said, you play action cards. Yep. You can also uh, invoke your special powers in your player mat. Yep. And if you have special abilities from previous classes past, you, you can, can use, use those. those as well. Yeah. Now, if you fail mm. a class, if you don't meet the criteria depicted here, you have to leave the card there and draw a failure card from the Indeed. failure deck. Now these can be uh, they range from anything that is basically innocuous, right? Uh, because you got lucky, like he did several times. That's right. Play. <laughs> it can be losing popularity. It can be uh, losing uh, tokens. Yep. It can also cause you to be suspended for the next trimester. So in general, if there are any lasting effects, you put those over here on the side of your player mm -hmm. mat until uh, that effect is over. Right. The interesting thing about taking these classes too is that it really ramps up from freshman year to senior year. You might think, oh, I've got five dice now. Yeah. But that does the, the conditions the get conditions harder. The conditions are so much harder in yeah. senior year. And it's really a challenge. I mean, I think we failed most of our classes in senior year. <laughs> we failed quite a few. <laughs> freshman year, we were, we were saying, oh, wow, I wish high school had been this easy. Yeah. That was easy. But when we got to junior year and senior year, it's like, oh, yeah, this yeah. is about how hard, hard high school was. All right, let's take a look at some of the action cards. I pulled three just to give you a feel for some of the things they do because there are a ton of different actions and these are just a small sampling. So Snitch allows some of that take that in this game. You're gonna force an opponent to re-roll one die of your choice. And you know what, if they just barely passed a class, this might be a great opportunity to make them re-roll one of those dice and potentially fail. And then Growth Spurt. Um, you get to exchange one of your dice for a red dice and you might hang on to this because if you show up in a trimester where the, a bunch of red cards come out, then this might be the time to get one of those red dice. Now, a great way to gain more popularity in high school, right? Throw a party and this card will give you a plus two on the popularity track. So like I said, there's a ton of different things that you can do with these action cards. Now let's take a look at some of these failure cards and there's potentially really devastating things that can happen to you. Um, like any high school game should have detention, right? So if you get detention from failing a class, then you're gonna lose an action card. Now, tardy is another obvious choice for a high school game. If you are tardy, then you're gonna roll a dice and on a one, you're gonna lose an action card. On a two to three, you're gonna go down in popularity and a four to six is gonna make you be the last player in the next trimester. So again, these action card, these failure cards, sorry, really can cause some headaches throughout the game and dumped in front of everyone. Now this, obviously you're gonna lose popularity. You're gonna go down by one in this, in, for this particular failure card. Now they're not all bad. These failure cards can be, oh, that wasn't so bad after all. So sweet talk your way out of it. You're gonna draw the card, basically nothing happens, you get off scot-free. So failure cards can be really game-changing, but not always. Now, during the school year, there's three trimesters, and after you, everyone takes a class or fails the class for that trimester, then the cards are pulled up, put in the discard, and then new cards are drawn for the second and third trimesters. Then at the end of the school year, we have some new options. Now the first option at the end of the school year is to attempt to take the ACT. Now, the only way you can go after this ACT test is if you would have accumulated three apples during your previous turns or previous years at school. So what you're gonna do is you're gonna take the six ACT uh, white dice and you're gonna roll them. You're gonna to total it up and that's gonna be your overall score for the ACD test. Now, if you have pencil tokens and they range from plus one to plus three, 
you can use these tokens to re-roll a single dice and then total your score again. However, you know, it might be worth a plus one to re-roll one of those dice, but a plus three pencil, you might just hang on to that and add it to your score because all the pencil tokens you have do add to your cumulative score um, after you've rolled the dice. So what you're gonna do then is you're gonna uh, consult the chart and you will move your scholastic token up that to that particular spot on the board. Now, you can take the ACT multiple times. So if you accumulate enough apples to do it a second and third time, then you have to try to beat your previous ACT score. And if you can't, then your score stays the same. Right, so up until the end of the game when the final scores are mm -hmm. tallied, basically this scholastic track only keeps track of your highest ACT score. Right. All right, so after everyone has finished taking the ACT, if that's something they were able to do, then you move into summer plans. And the first thing you're gonna do is get a job. I guess, get a job? Yeah, yeah. It's, it's actually advantageous. So you get another action card. And like I said, these action cards are really quite valuable because you can beat up on other players with them <laughs> and you can also augment your dice rolls. You can. So they're very valuable. And then the next option is to just hang out for the summer, which gains popularity. And you move up that popularity track, you get three points for that, which is really quite valuable because going first in each of the trimesters, you know, gives you the most options for getting tokens and special abilities and extra dice down the road. Right, and also your position on the popularity track also translates into points at the end of the game. It so does. keep that in mind. Yep. Now, if you choose not to take the first two options of getting a job or hanging out, players who have passed less than two classes during the previous school year have the option of taking another class, an extra class, from that year. Now, summer school? Summer school sounds like a drag, <laughs> but could be very useful, especially if you're trying to collect apples to right. collect the ACT it's in absolutely future valuable. years. Yeah. yeah. So uh, they can do that, and the benefit of doing summer school is if you do not pass the class, if you do not uh, roll dice and do not mm -hmm. achieve that condition, you don't have to take a failure card. Next up, you're gonna increment your dice pool. Now, if you have dice in the reserve spot on your player board, these are the dice that get added into your pool. However, if you don't, then you have to grab one of the black dice. And of course, the disadvantage of this is that the black dice don't match any of the colors of the classes, so players don't get to re-roll them. So everyone still gets a full complement of dice, two for freshmen, three for sophomore, four for junior, and five for seniors. Now that doesn't shut you down entirely from succeeding in the coming years, but you better have special <laughs> powers or strong action cards to do so. Indeed. So, uh, you might even plan during your freshman year, you might say I'd focus only on dice even mm -hmm. though I can't use them right away, just so I can relax and not worry about those in coming years. Because Indeed. there's no guarantee class yeah. cards with additional dice will come out. <laughs> not at all. Now, in addition to incre incrementing your dice pool, you'll also do two other things. The first is adding one action card to your hand. And again, these can be very powerful. Right. And then the last thing is taking the, the uh, class cards for that particular year, putting them aside, and putting cards for the upcoming year in their place. Now, if this is the last year of school, you won't do these things. Right. You won't in increment your dice pool. You won't get an additional action card. You won't, you won't have, there's nothing to go to beyond so, right, senior. Exactly. Yeah. So uh, these you do are, get one last opportunity to take the ACT. Yes, though. you do. So at the very end of your four-year career in high school, if you have apples, mm -hmm. you can then take the ACT and hopefully maybe score better than you had previously. That's right. All right. Some in-game scoring to see who was the best student throughout their high school career. So the thing is, there's several points to get here. You get points for the uh, popularity track, for yes, one. Yes, you do. Right? And, and it's not just linear. It's, it's, there, are, there are groups. So there you are might, groups. You might choose to play cards, mm -hmm. like your parent card frequently has an increase in popularity options. So right. if you can use that, discard your parent card, and maybe move up to that next block of popularity. Just, yeah, yeah exactly. so, so you can get a few more points. And then you have uh, your scholastic track. And, you know, that was all related to... Uh, your ACTs right. and how well you did and if you right. took it multiple times and if you were able to increment through the different testing procedures. So that's another point that you'll total up. And then you're going to total up how many classes you actually um, finished throughout your high school career and you'll get points based on a scale for that as well. Mm -hmm. And then you'll take your scholastic tokens and total those up as well. So it's basically the four things. Your best ACT score, yep. if you've taken it. Now, it's it's possible to do fairly well even yeah. without taking the ACT. Right, it is. If you have the chance, do so. Absolutely. So your ACT score, your popularity mm -hmm. score, 
the score based upon the number of classes you've taken, right. uh, translated in that table they provided, and any of those uh, scholastic point tokens you had on your card. That produces your final score, and whoever has the most points wins, wins the, the game. game. All right, folks, once again, just a reminder, this has been a Dice Tower paid preview and everything you've seen here has been in prototype form. So the artwork and the rules still might be in flux. So keep a close eye on the campaign for any changes. Now, with that said, you know, I'm, it's pretty historic at this point that I am a huge Dice Tower <laughs> fan. I don't think anybody's unclear about right. that. Yeah. <laughs> so I really like that aspect of this game. And there's some really nice ways to augment Dice and some real take that back and forth. Yeah, there is. Yeah. There is take that, but it's not mean or no, offensive or it's anything not, like it that. It really yeah. was a fun little game. It is. So we are pleasantly surprised by that. It goes quickly. And I'm not as into Dice Chucking as no, Mark is, but I still enjoyed it. You know, you have, you have some decisions to make about you if do. you do add dice to your pool which ones do you choose yep. um, also do you say this class do I, do I go for the the one that gives me the most rewards or why do I play a little bit safer right. over here and also when you choose to uh, play a card against your opponent is a trick as well it because is. do you shut them down for that particular class or try to shut them down for something bigger yep. later and I really like that the whole popularity track is just really fun during the, the middle of the game because you're like, oh, I'm way more popular than <laughs> yeah. So that tends to go up and down just, yes, like, just like real popularity does in, in high school. <laughs> Indeed. All right, folks. So if this looks like a game that would be of interest to you, I'm sure they'd appreciate your support. Definitely. And I think that's it from us. Yep. And until next time, we'll, we'll see you at the table. table. Thanks so much for watching the Dice Tower videos. Find more great videos and reviews as well as our top-rated audio podcast at Dicetower.com. You can also find other great shows at Dicetowernetwork.com. I'm Eric Summerer, and you've been watching The Dice Tower. The Dice Tower is sponsored by Cool Stuff, Inc., where you can find great games for great prices. Cool Stuff, in stock. Check them out at CoolStuffInc.com.